Welcome to our first screencast on sorting for ICS-211. We're going to talk today briefly about the quadratic sorts. There are simple algorithms to do sorting. So what is sorting? It's arranging data in order. And the big question is, what does in order mean? Uh, imagine you were sorting students in a classroom. What kinds of things can you use to create order? You could use GPA, first name, last name, height, um, eye color, you can do all sorts of things that says I want them in an order. So you have to have a way of determining what is less than what uh, another, uh, what is, means equality and what's greater than. Um, sorting is an important programming skill. We use it a lot. Um, normally you're going to use built-in sorting, but you should understand the sort different sorting algorithms. Uh, sort of studying the algorithms provides you some insight into problem solving. We basically have the same problem, take a bunch of things and put them in order. So there are different approaches to putting things in order. And secondly, the analysis and comparisons of the algorithms allows you to be able to decide what's the best algorithm for your particular situation. If you're sorting a few items, then maybe you want to use a simpler algorithm with a higher performance cost. But maybe if you're starting 10 million items, maybe you want a more a better performance algorithm. Or maybe you have to worry about the, the amount of memory you have to use to sort things. There's all these different uh, considerations for choosing an algorithm. So we'll talk about some of the performance, the big O performance of some of these simpler um, sorts in this talk. Java does supply some sorting methods out of the box. So you can use the arrays class, has a sort method. It provides a method for sorting arrays of things. Um, and it uses a quick sort, which is a complicated or complex sort we'll talk about later on in the semester. The collections class provides a sort method that allows you to sort lists. Um, it uses a different algorithm called the merge sort to sort these together. Um, both of these methods use a comparator that allows you to determine the in-orderness of the things that you are um, Sorting. So, if you had a, a, a list of students, you could use a comparator that compares their first name, you could use a comparator that compares their uh, last name, you could use a comparator that compares their GPA, and use the collection sort and have the list sorted differently depending on the comparator you use. Um, both of these, the quick sort and the merge sort, have a big O of n log n, which is a reasonably efficient sort or performance for the sort, and that's why Java chose these method, these sorting algorithms. But today we're going to talk about um, a couple of simpler sorts that sort of give you an idea of how you would approach the sorting problem. Uh, the first one is the selection sort. It has a very simple algorithm. It's basically you look at your array and the first time through you find the smallest or the largest item in the array and put it in the first position. You then consider the rest of the array, find the smallest or the largest and put it in the next position. You keep doing that all the way through the array until you get to the end and you now have put everything in its right place and so you have a sorted array. So the algorithm is basically we go from 0, the first position, to n minus 2. The reason we use n minus 2 is we don't need to sort that last position because it will be there so we can stop at n minus 2 instead of n minus 1. We choose the fill position, so that's indicating where we're going to put the smallest thing. We take another pointer to keep track of where the smallest thing we found so far. We start at fill, because it might be the smallest. And then we have a next pointer that goes from fill plus one to the end of the array. And we just compare, is the thing at pause min and the thing at next is POSMIN smaller than next. So it's 35 less than 65. If so, we just increment uh, next. So it's 35 less than 30. No. So 30 is now the smallest thing we've seen. So we update POSMIN. Update next. So it's 30 less than 60. Yes. So we don't do anything to POSMIN. Update next. Is 30 less than 20? No. So we update POSMIN. And then now we're done at the, we've gone all the way to N minus 1. So now we exchange the item at pause min with the one fill. So we put 20 there and 35 at pause min. So now we've got the smallest item in the array at position zero. So 
So now we update the fill, so then we're gonna find the next smallest thing, update pause min, set next, the 65 and 30, less than 30, no, so we update pause min, update next, 30 less than 60, yes, so we don't do anything, update next, it's 30 less than 35, Yes, so we don't update pause min, so now we swap 30 and 35. Oh, excuse me, third, fill and pause min. And now we update fill, update pause min, update next. Is 65 less than 60? No, so pause min moves up. Update next. Is 60 less than 35? No, so update pause min. And then we do our exchange. And now we update fill, and this is the last time because fill is now n minus two. So we're, this is the last time through the loop. Set pause min, set next. Is 60 less than 65? Nope. Oh yes, give me yes. We don't do don't change pause min, so we update fill. We exchange 60 with 60 with itself. You can put an if statement there to not do the exchange because why do you need to swap 60 with itself? And then we're actually done because we're at n minus 2, so the array is now sorted. So let's talk briefly about what the analysis of how many times we do comparisons, how many times do we do exchanges. So the inner loop is run n minus 1 times because fill goes from 0 to n minus 2, so that's n minus 1 times. And then there are, which means there are n minus one exchanges. We could sh shut that down, we can make that slightly smaller if we put that if statement in, but it's still order of n exchanges. Uh, the comparisons are gonna be done n minus one minus fill times. So that's n minus one, because fill starts at zero, n minus two plus n minus three plus plus plus, and eventually three, two, and one. So that's a series, that's how many comparisons we do. You can rewrite that series as n squared over two minus n over two, and we take the big O of that, we ignore the n factor, so it's an n squared, and we ignore the divide by two, so it's a big O of n squared for the number of comparisons we have to do, big O of n for the number of exchanges we do, so in general the algorithm is a big O of n squared and so that's called a quadratic sort. Um, fairly simple sort, we're just looking for the minimum thing and putting it in the right place and then we keep going, building up our sorted array as we're putting the, the thing in the right place. Another sort algorithm called the bubble sort, another quadratic sort, is another approach would be if you compare adjacent items and only swap them when they're not in the right place. So what that does is you keep swapping things and you keep comparing, you keep running through the comparison again and again and again, and eventually things, the small ones bubble to the top and the big things sink to the bottom. And bubbling up is why it's called the bubble sort. So we switch the array to be vertical so you get a more sense of what the bubbling looks like. Um, and so we're just gonna keep doing this until the array is sorted. So we compare, so for each adjacent element, so we look at 0 and 1, and is 42 and 60 in the right place? No, so we swap them, and then we go to the next pair. 60 and 75, 60 is less than 75, so we don't do anything. We go to the next one, 75 and 83. We don't do anything, and now we look at 83 and 27, and so we swap them. And now, at the end of the first pass, of comparing each of the pairs, we know that the largest value has sunk to the right place and 42 and 27 have started to bubble up to the right place. They've bubbled up a little bit and they're gonna continue bubbling up until they're in the right place. So we now know that if we have three, four more passes, we'll be completely sorted. Actually, three more passes, we know that we'll be sorted. So now we go back to the top. Is 42 and 60 in the right relationship? Yes. So we don't do anything, we compare, look at the next pair, 60 and 75 are okay, 27 and 75, and then we swap them, and now 75 is in the right place, it has sunk to the right place. So now we know we don't need to compare 3 and 4 because they're already in the right place. 
So we go back up to the top. Uh, 42 and 60, that's good. They're okay. 27 and 60, we got to swap them. And now 60 is in the right place. So now let's go back up one more time. And then are they in the right order? We swap them and now the array has been sorted. So we know that we only have to do n minus one passes. And we, by swapping, comparing each thing, we know that it will be sorted. Now we can also detect if while the array is not sorted. So sometimes the array may become sorted before we've done n minus one passes. We can detect this by counting the number of swaps we made. And if at ever at one point we didn't do any swaps, then the array is sorted because each looking at each pair, they're in the right order, go all the way through to the end, they're in the right order, we're done. So we can keep track if any time we do one of these loop passes through and we didn't do any swaps, the array is sorted. So we can actually stop the bubble sort before doing n minus one passes if we're checked the number of swaps. So what is the analysis? So we do a number of comparisons. Again, it's n minus one, n minus two, plus dot, dot, dot. We know that that's an n squared, big O of n squared for the comparisons. And potentially we had to do swaps the whole way. So at worst case, you have n minus two comparisons, always. And then worst case, we have n minus two exchanges if we had to swap each time. Um, so but compared to the selection sort, the bubble sort is usually worse because we have to do more exchanges, potentially have to do more exchanges than we did in the selection sort because we're only doing the n minus one exchanges. Um, the benefit of using the bubble sort is if the array is sorted, the bubble sort will actually stop and will actually run a little bit quicker. But that's if you run in your bubble sort over a sorted array. The third and last quadratic sort we're talking about is an insertion sort. And it's somewhat, uh, the idea is you're gonna make space for the next item to be inserted into the array. So it's similar to the way you might pick up a card, you pick up the next card, and then you put it in the right place in your hand. So you keep putting it in the right place. You put it in between, you make space, and you put it in. So here's the idea, we're gonna do it vertically again. So we consider the first card, or the first item in the array, as being, it's sorted, it's in the right place for the array of length one. So now we say, we wanna say, we wanna take the next thing and put it into the array in the right place. And so this array is gonna be have a length of two. So we remember 25 and then we say, is 25 less than 30? If so, we need to make space for 25. So we move 30 and then we insert the 25 into that space we just created. And now we go on and consider the next item. So now we wanna shift things down or to make space for the 15. So we say, is 15 less than 30? Yes, so we move 30. Is 15 less than 25? Yes, so we move 25. And now we have space for the 15, so we stick the 15 in the right place. We move on to the next item, so we take 20. Is 20 less than 30? Yes, so we shift 30. Is 20 less than 25? Yes, so we shift 25. Is 20 less than 15? No, so that space right there is exactly where we need to put it, so we stick it there. Then we go on to the last one. Is 28 less than 30? Yes, so we shift it to make space. Is 28 less than 25? No, so we insert the 28 in the right slot and we have created, a, we have sorted the array. Now we're doing this insertion by shifting things over n minus one times because we start with zero, we consider that the sorted array, so we do that n minus one times. Now how many times do we need to do the shifting, how many times do we have to shift things? Well, that's dependent on the array. So the insertion, that shifting, creating the space, is performed n minus one times. In the worst case, we have to shift all the items over one before we can do the insertion. You know, we have to make space for all the things. So that could be an n minus one operation. So the, that's an n times, n minus one times n minus one, so that's an n squared. The maximum number of comparisons for that is that next value less than, again, it's one, two, three, n minus one, so that's an n squared again. So the insertion sort is 
got n minus one, or excuse me, n squared, big O of n squared comparisons and potentially sh uh, exchanges, because when you do that, shifting over. Um, so here's a summary of the quadratic sorts. Number of comparisons, selection sort is n squared both cases, because you have to go through and always find the smallest or largest one in the rest, so it's the same. There's no stopping when you notice it's shorted. It's sorted. The bulbous sort, um, you can notice when the array is sorted, so that's why it's a big O of n on the best case. So you only run through, you look at each pair once, that's n operations, and then you're done. Um, worst case, you're going to do the operations until it's sorted, so it's n squared. Insertion sort, um, you still look at all the things, but you may not shift anything, so there may be zero shifts, so that's why you still have to look at each one. Um, that's why it's big O of n in the best case. In the worst case, you shift everything, so it's a big O of n squared. The number of exchanges, again, in selection sort, we always exchange the smallest one into the right place, so that's big O of n. Bubble sort, if you don't swap anything, when you go through and you're done, there's no exchanges, so that's big O of 1. Uh, worst case, you're going to have to swap every one every time. In search and sort, same thing, the number of exchanges, you are shifting things, which is, and you're exchanging them. Um, in the worst case, you're shifting a lot of things, so it's big O of n squared. So, in general, the insertion sort gives you the best behavior for most arrays because if it's a sorted array, you have a big O of n. But in general, it's n squared. But you also don't have the problem of lots of comparisons often. You know, you don't have the, the number of exchanges being large and the number of comparisons being large. So that tends to make it a better performance. Uh, generally, the bubble sort gives you the worst performance uh, because you have those comparisons and you have the swaps. That takes more time. Um, but the biggest thing is these quadratic sorts, even though they're simple and easy to understand how they work, because they're big O of n squared, are not good, say again, not good on large n. They take too much time. Thank you very much.